Hi, I'm Amanda Morrell, Personal Finance Editor with Interest.co.nz, and this is another one of our Double Shot interviews. Today I'm joined by Interest.co.nz's Banking and Finance Editor, Gareth Vaughan. Hi, Gareth. Hi. Gareth's going to talk to us today about something that appears to be on the minds of more than a few Kiwis, and that's the stability of the banking sector given all the turmoil in Europe. So I'm going to read the question, Gareth, and then uh, we'll drill down to some of the answers, hopefully. So this, this is the following question. I have a large sum of money on a one-year term deposit with Rabobank maturing the 31st of March 2012. I'm watching events in Europe with concern. Is Rabobank in any danger of collapse or can I rest easy? So in, you've done quite a few stories on this area. Um, in your opinion, is this, um, would you be nervous and is there a risk of Rabobank and similarly other banks potentially losing people's money? Well, there's certainly risk in Europe at the moment, which has been very well publicised, and there's lots of warnings and concerns about the banking system there. But having said that, um, Rabobank um, has a reputation of being one of the most conservative banks in, in Europe, if not the world. Okay. Um, it's a Dutch co-op cooperative. Yeah. It has its roots in the farming agricultural sector. Um, it, it, it recently had its credit rating downgraded two notches by Standard & Poor's, from AAA, which is the mm -hmm. highest possible rating, to AA, okay. but that's still the highest rated privately owned bank in the world. Yep. Um, and look, I mean, I guess, in short, I mean, if, if, if the worst was to happen to Rabobank, frankly, there wouldn't be much left of the European banking sector. So I certainly um, would be more concerned about a lot of other banks um, ahead of being concerned about Rabobank. Okay, and so why were they downgraded in the first place? What was behind that? Basically, Standard & Poor's has changed the way they rate banks, and this has come out of the global financial crisis, and uh, basically what they're saying is the neighbourhood that the, the bank operates in is more important than they were previously giving, um, giving credit for. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really to do with that. Um, so whilst a downgrade is, is still a downgrade, I wouldn't um, be too jittery about that. Okay. And now it's, it's got the largest presence here and there's a considerable sum of Kiwi money invested. Um, do you have any figures there in terms of how, how much money is under management? Yeah, look, Rubber Bank New Zealand, which is obviously a subsidiary of the, of the Dutch bank, is, yeah. is regulated by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Okay. Um, it's got about $3 billion New Zealand dollars in deposits here. Yeah. And um, it's got about nearly $8 billion in loans. It's a rural specialist. It has been growing lending to the, the rural sector in New Zealand probably faster, we think, than, than the bigger banks like mm -hmm. the ANZ National um, in recent times. It sees a, a good opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. um, it's also uh, our publisher, um, David Chaston, puts together um, bank leverage tables, and this measures um, the assets versus the shareholder uh, funds. Now, mm -hmm. Uh, in the last round of general disclosure statements, Rabo came in second behind ANZ in, in that measure, okay. um, with its assets um, exceeding its shareholder funds by 11.8 times. Yep. Um, and it grew lending in that September quarter by over $400 million, which, which as, I, as I said, is, is, is to the, the rural sector. Yep. Um, one area specifically where I would watch um, in, in that rural sector is they have a disproportionate exposure to the wine sector, mm -hmm. which has had a lot of tough times in recent years. Um, and um, so that's certainly one area to keep an eye on. Mm, okay. Now, in terms of its independence um, from the European parent, I mean, does that put it in any different risk category at all? You, you mentioned the exposure to the wine. And that's a strong element of our economy here. Well, not a huge one, but... Um, so how tied are the two risks, um, given their different geographical... Yeah, well, the, the Rubber Bank New Zealand, it, it is regulated by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, so it has to meet all the requirements that local banks have to have to meet in terms of its capital adequacy and, and all those other factors. Okay. Um, but to put its parent in, in a bit more perspective, um, the, the, the global chief financial officer was in New Zealand back in August. Now they have bonds and, 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 and um, debt on issue to New Zealand investors, and he mm -hmm. makes reasonably regular visits. Mm -hmm. um, and I did an interview with him in August, and he said that the Rabobank Group, the, the mm -hmm. parent in, in the Netherlands, um, has about 400 million US dollars worth of exposure to the so-called European pigs. Now, that's mm -hmm. obviously Portugal, Ireland, Italy, yeah. Greece, and Spain. To put that into context, the group has about 269 billion euros of assets. So yeah. its exposure to that part of the world is very small. Okay. Um, and you certainly you look at some of the French banks, like mm -hmm. say Credit Agricole, yep. they have subsidiaries 
or um, stakes in mm -hmm. banks in Greece, Spain, Portugal, mm -hmm. and and Italy. So they are certainly much more heavily exposed to that part of the world than Rabobank is. Okay, so relative to some other parties out there, it's not looking too bad. So a, a few people have asked me um, about the government guarantees. Now they have been extended over in Australia, but what's the case here on retail deposits? Are they are they protected at all? In it? Well, we have a um, the, the extended retail deposit guarantee scheme, which is poised to um, end on December the 31st. Now, there's only four um, companies that are still party to that. There's the Heartland Group, which mm -hmm. is formerly you know, the merged Marac, uh, CBS Canterbury and Southern Cross Building Society. Um, then we have Fisher & Paykel Finance mm -hmm. in there, the Wairarapa Building Society, mm -hmm. and indeed um, PGG Rights and Finance, which was taken over by Heartland recently. Okay. Um, now... Both um, Fisher and Paykel and the Wire Rapper Building Society some time mm -hmm. ago stopped taking um, deposits that were covered by the guarantee. Mm -hmm. Heartland's been steering people away from the guarantee. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, the Heartland guarantee now, um, but it, it's, it's almost over. And they're so certainly talking confidently that they are, are, are well prepared to, to deal with it. Okay. Now, what about these uh, financial stress tests? Or are the banks here going to be subject to those potentially? And, and would that be an indication for investors to either stay away or take their money out of the bank? Or? Yeah, well, the, the, the bank regulators um, on both sides of the Tasman um, cooperate sporadically on, on these so-called stress tests, and the banks do their own internal ones as well. Mm -hmm. um, we had some reports out of Australia that the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority is doing some pretty, um, you know, uh, strident um, tests on the big Aussie banks at the moment because of concerns of, of what's happening in Europe and how that could roll on to hit Australia, perhaps via China, which is obviously a, their key trading partner. Yeah. And the Reserve Bank of New Zealand um, does tend to partake in these tests. Um, obviously, the, the four big banks in New Zealand, mm -hmm. ANZ, ASB, um, also Westpac um, and... Um, ANZ, ASB, Westpac and BNZ are obviously subsidiaries of the big four Aussie banks. Yep. So it's fairly safe to assume that the Reserve Bank will be will be taking part in the Australian stress testing. Okay, good to know. Well, Gareth, thank you very much for that information. I should say to our readers here, none of this constitutes any personal financial advice. We're not financial advisors here, but we're just here to provide you with information to help you make an informed decision. So Gareth is our banking and finance editor. I'm Amanda Morell, personal finance editor with interest.co.nz.